Hello and welcome to US Tsuji360. I'm your host, Dilba Shatterson, and this week, we're continuing the second piece of our California wildfire featurette. Last time, you saw how local residents were affected by the 2007 wildfires and how they found peace and strength from the ashes. But today, you'll meet the team of volunteers who were there to guide them from the get-go. And while the help for those affected is needed, what is at stake for these responders? A study published by the Macarera Medical School released in 2008 suggests that those that work in rescue situations are considered a high-risk occupational group and that they could experience a broad range of health and mental health consequences as a result of work-related exposures to critical incidents. This means that the risks for each disaster relief volunteer is high, especially if exposed to an environment of chaos and potential physical danger. And this sacrifice makes the help of all those who put on their uniforms without question all the more valuable. So let's find out about how our team in blue and white made it through. Well, 2003, I thought, okay, this is the largest fire in, in, you know, in the history at that point. And I says, I doubt if I'll see another one of those in my career. Well, I, I shouldn't have said that because 2007 rolled around and it happened again. This is a tragic time for the state of California. Those are the words of Governor Arnold Schwarzenegger. 12 to 14 major fires burning from north of Los Angeles all the way down to the Mexican border. 2007年,其实让我对人生的改变很大。我从2003年开始呢,我是这边的负责这边圣地亚哥联络处的负责人。the weather was really dry, and, um, and uh, we had uh, very little rain at the time, and the wind was very strong. Basically, we had all the ingredients, all the factors for um, a really bad fire. At the time, uh, it was quite dramatic because it happened, all happened very fast. And this was the area of the 2007 Harris fire. This is close to the starting point of the fire, where it's uh, about a half mile west of where it started. We had fire up over on the other side of this hill, and then off to the west here, we had fire coming at us in that direction. It was just phenomenal at the rate of spread. I watched fire burning with the wind, big flames coming this way on the, on the brush and that, as well as underneath it, fire burning just as fast the other direction. I never witnessed that in my entire career. This telephone pole that we have right here, this power pole, we had flames that were higher than that, coming at probably about 45 to 55 miles an hour. The fire bumped up to the back of these lower houses. We had the engines in there. We were just going house to house to house to house, keeping them from burning, and we just moved on up. The we had to pack all important documents and, you know, and pack our cars and get ready because we knew from the news that we would be evacuated. The danger has passed and we were able to get back to the house. And to our surprise, we turned on the answering machine. Our answering machine was full of messages from all the brothers and sisters. 然后下一步的话，就是我们就要师姐师兄要开始做这种急难救助的部分嘛。We went out to the community and pass out the cash cards. 这个五百块钱其实是及时的可以救到很多。A lot of the victims, fire victims, did not have uh, clothes with, you know, with them to change and formula for their kids. So it was intended for 
those uh, items, the most uh, essential items. 一直在发慌的当中，在第四天就有一个先生带了七个孩子来，他就用英文讲说 ，Has Pudis come yet？ 后来我们知道之后，我们就觉得大家看看就会心的微笑啊，对了，菩萨来了，其实我们就是菩萨。接着呢，我们就要去募款，但是我们师姑师伯全部都到了那个都去灾区去了，所以呢，我们的人也不够了，所以我们还是用我们的慈心的孩子，那我们他们就开始到各个 supermarket。很多小朋友呢，小小年纪，两岁三岁，他能懂什么？可他知道有灾难要去救人。有的是说，啊，师姑，我要坐在，我要站在椅子上，这样高一点，跟大人一样，这样讲起来木款比较方便。有的是说，我不要，我要把那个木款箱放在我的头上，这样的话呢，他说这样的话，大家可以叫马上投钱。说孩子是有爱心的，只要你启发他。种种的，还有一位太太呢，她是拿了她的房子全烧掉了，她就拍了个照片，她就告诉我们，这就是我的房子，她全被烧了，好，那希望我们来协助他们。还有先生呢，会拿照片给我们看，他就讲说啊，他就在他的家门口，房子先都烧掉了，他说 ，Finally no termites。他经过那么大的灾难，可是他还能够用很乐观的态度来度过这样的难关。我想，这是美国人就是很可爱的一个地方。灾难来的时候哦，你只有在灾区的时候才能够感同身受哦。那我们很庆幸，就是我们有那个因缘，可以就是说在那 one stop station 跟这些灾民直接面对面的接触啊。他们进来的时候，其实都是忧愁的脸，真的是很烦恼，然后有的甚至于还掉眼泪。他来我们的 One Stop Station 的 b o o t 的时候，其实我们给他的不只是那一张限制卡，很多时候我们真的就是跟着，好像，呃，回复到他们那个灾区发生的情况的时候，我们真的就是也是跟着他们心痛，很心疼，然后我们就会给他一个爱的拥抱。So much, so much of the time, I saw so many houses lost, and now to see where we did actually accomplish and save, and see that it's still, you know, in the shape that it's in, it's kind of nice. It's kind of nice to see that. Our life as a whole is impermanent, and we got to accept that, understand that, and take that learning moment, and be there to be compassionate and help when you can. 2007 fire. Uh, we learned a lot from that particular disaster. Master Jing always reminds us we have to purify our minds. It's very important for us to teach our kids those values from the very beginning. And that's why I got more and more involved with the Sunday school here in San Diego. I really enjoy what I'm doing right now. I get to um, interact with our young kids uh, on a weekly basis, and um, I learn a lot from them as well. 二零零七年的火灾之后呢，我就觉得说，我们需要来爱护这个地球，所以呢，从那个时候开始呢，我就很认真的，几乎每天我都出来做环保，希望它呢能够净化这个地球。我呢，总共有这个九个点，每天我都出去收，这整个整区，我们这个 subdivision， 大概有三十个房子。每一家，我都有去跟他们讲环保，让他们知道说环保的重要。Hi, hi, come on. Margaret does an extraordinary job. She comes out uh, every recycling day and uh, ambitiously goes out and collects as many recycles and cardboard as she can. I think what she does is an amazing job, very much needed in the community, and uh, it's a great thing that she does. Keep up the good work, Margaret. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you so much. 上人说：“菩萨，菩萨就是要去帮助别人的。”所以我自己觉得说，如果我要朝着这个菩萨的道上，其实帮助别人其实是很快乐。如果下一次再有火灾的时候，我相信呢，我都已经准备好 ，I'm ready， 带着上人的祝福呢，一样勇往直前，努力的去做。As you saw, Margaret Ye was able to lead her team through to success and peace, all while keeping her white pants squeaky clean. 
But really, it's the courage and it's the dedication of great citizens like her that give her pants and her shirt meaning. And it's this meaning that has inspired many to proudly join the ranks of other Tsuji volunteers. One example is Mark and his wife, Lori, both who you've seen on our program before. Mark, as we've already learned, served as a firefighter for many years, but a turning point came for him when he came across Tsuji volunteers who responded to another fire in 2012. Let's see what his journey was like now. When I joined Suchi, um, after I had retired from fire service, it was a natural transition for me to go over to Suchi. My whole career was dedicated to service, not to judge people or, you know, when somebody called for help, uh, it didn't matter their income level, it didn't matter any of that, and never was, that was never the focus. I knew I wanted to be a firefighter before I could walk. I started studying about being a firefighter about sixth grade. I learned everything about engines, I learned about pumps, I started studying fire behavior. I would go to the station and bug the guys there and they would, you know, kind of try to shine me on to this some little kid coming. But then when I started giving them answers to things and they were like, wait a minute, how does this kid know this? Actual firefighting, I started at 17. That was the legal age that I could start. I had to get my parents to sign it. My dad wasn't going to sign it. And I said, that's OK, I'll forge your signature. And so he relented and signed it because he knew I would. Some say, you know, you might age many years after that first season. You go to fires, you go to death, you go to destruction. Um, how does that weigh on a person, you know? I had to learn how to deal with it. Throughout the years, I went to many different fires. In fact, I was looking at uh, a chart of California's 20 largest fires. I was on 12 of those. All this area just changed from what I remember. You know, my yeah. uncle, when he used to live here, and you know, this was their pride and joy. They used to have this place all fixed up nice and restored back to its original. Right. Just, and we got, you met Suchi that way. Exactly. Exactly. This is so, sadly to say, but this is the the the, the incident that um, introduced. Yeah, if it was Me to uh, Suchi. Yeah. I'm Peggy Jo. Um, right now, I'm the director of a, a Suchi San Diego Service Center. And I met Lori in 2012 uh, when there's a fire in the Hakamba area. She was not uh, affected by the fire, but she wanted to help their, her, uh, her community. So she wanted to start a, uh, have a fundraising dinner for the, for the fire victim. The moment I explained to Sister Peggy um, what I, my intent was for the families, she didn't even hesitate. You instantly felt that true compassion and concern for the, the families. So I went to the dinner and we actually did a uh, explanation, explaining what Suji is doing, our history, how we started, and explain the whole thing. And that's that's the time when I first met Mark. I watched what they did, because I was kind of standing back, you know, as I was kind of uh, hesitant about going in because of previous other things I witnessed. It took my husband six months. It took me that moment. Suchi does volunteering is how I do volunteering. You give a person back hope. I started going to some events, and Peggy would call me and say, come on, come see this, come on. And she'd take us over, and she'd take me over and show me something, and I said, and I finally said, how did I become a volunteer? Every person I met, they were sincere. You know, they help you. Um, they encourage you. So, you know, it's just, it's a good way to live. Uh, basically, every event, as long as they know about it, <laughs> they will join. We used to have a saying, uh, words are vapor. That's all it is, it's vapor, unless there's action. 
It means nothing. We're here today to uh, make a visit to one of our uh, elders in our back country who uh, has difficulty during the winter time. Uh, she doesn't know if she's going to eat or have heat. Long time no see. No. <laughs> this one too. This yeah, one. Yeah, but this is a whole package and this is uh, unflavored. Right, right. This is an individual pack. Do they say how many cups or anything? I cannot read this thing. Yeah, it's in Chinese. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> That's very My kids had to go down road, you know, or downsize because the all the <clears throat> people got laid off and stuff like that. So they had to go to the other place. There was no room for me. Besides the kids, my grandkids didn't need me anymore. The first thing we asked, you know, besides coming to see you, uh, what can we do to help you get through another winter? The first thing she didn't even hesitate, but the first thing she said is fuel. I usually could have maybe half an hour at the most because you use a lot of gasoline. So then I turn it off to keep it just get a little bit warm. No one should have to live like that. No one, they, especially when they're an elder like that, they should feel secure. They should feel safety and security. And, you know, unfortunately in our area, there's a lot that don't feel that. Hard to walk around. I have to squeeze it in the other side. Every time I turn my heater on, I think of her and all the others. So I taught myself last winter when I met Toku, I turned my heater on only enough to take the chill off the house. Never, really, unless they're bringing something here or they needed something. But my son was, I only saw a couple of years ago once. That was it. We, we've lost it, the respect. And it crushes me because I know the story behind Toku, why she lives where she lives. I know what happened and it hurts. In the brothers and sisters I met, my goodness, you know, life felt like changing. You know, when they come, I was just surprised last year they came. Yeah, they are wonderful. It's been, uh, <laughs> she has been. <laughs> And I know Toku, and I was telling my husband on, on the way into San Diego, I says, she will be without food in two weeks because she will share it with those, her neighbors. Love you too. That's the kind of person she is. <laughs> When he told me that we were going to be getting up at three o'clock in the morning to do sutra, you know, the more, with teachings with uh, Dharma Master Chen Yen, I go, what time are we getting up? And I says, I thought you retired. Uh, good morning, everyone. Good um, morning. Good morning. Yeah, we, we started our, our discussion on August 11th. And, uh, when I first got up, I go, boy, it's hard to get up this early. But after the first day, it wasn't. Um, after a week, it didn't even phase me anymore. I keep thinking, well, Master can get up that early in the morning and give us, put all that work into it, and then give us these teachings. I can at least sit and listen. Suchi has brought my husband and I closer together. We still have a little bit of our differences but it more so in a respectful way. We've, we've been married uh, almost 35 years. Sometimes you take things for granted because you've always done it and blah, blah, blah. And next thing you know, you go, well, I should have said thank you. 
Yeah. You know. This one, the VA has fire. This was the beginning when I used to say my curse. And every time I was ready to either go on vacation or go on vacation, there would be a large fire. This was the start of that. The wind was blowing so hard, it was blowing fire through the culverts, and it was coming up through the vents on the other side. And I mean, just see flames shooting straight up and, you know, smoke coming up all around me. And I'm watching all the way, all these gutters, all the way down the freeway, and I'm going like, whoa. Being married to a firefighter is a joyful uh, position, but it also has a whole lot of hardships. There was a, a repeat of another one, uh, very, very similar that I will never forget. And they almost, they got burned over, but luckily they had those uh, retardant blankets. And he saved his crew uh, by making them lay down and, and cover real quick. And I saw all that on the news. He called me right away and he said, don't listen to the news, we are alive. And it was the best phone call I ever had in my life. To this day, there's still the residual effects from it. I have no feeling on the top of my hands. My fingertips don't have any feeling. Um, I could pick up a hot item and burn my hands, and I won't feel it. I started practicing sign language for one of the performances with Suchi. And it really helped me get movement back in my fingers and tell them what to do now. I can make them move, I can make them do different things, which I couldn't do quite as readily. As a firefighter, you're a brother and you're a sister, yeah. your family. And with Su Chi, that, thing. that enlarged thing. our family even more so. The sincerity of so, it, the whole sincerity yeah. of it. No matter who I met, the sincerity was the same as firefighters. Mm -hmm. Natural fit. Through Mark and Lori's example, we see how demonstrating perseverance in a time of need can inspire those around us to do the same. But there's a little fact I'd like to share with you that I was surprised to learn myself when it comes to this type of disaster. That 90% of all wildfires in California are caused by people. That is a number that comes from the California Wildland Fire Coordinating Group and it's a number that should make us all think twice about fire safety. So what's the best way of helping prevent a potentially huge disaster? The group suggests that you don't mow your lawn if it's too windy or too dry, that if you start a campfire, you keep a shovel and a bucket of water nearby at all times, and not to drive onto dry grass or brush, just to name a few. So if fires are an issue in your area, I hope you remember the stories of your neighbors and those you met today. And I hope that through their examples, you will work with your families to keep your communities fire-free. I'm Dilbar Shatterson. Thank you for joining me this time. I will see you soon. <laughs>